Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Empowering Voices. And today, our uh, guest is uh, Ambila Nath. And um, she will tell us uh, what she does. But uh, she's a coach, she's a healer, and she is a tarot reader. So these things combined uh, do what uh, our guest is. We will start. Uh, first of all, welcome, sorry, <laughs> but because we were having already a chat, I already welcomed that anyway, and uh, we will start from uh, the um, unstoppable resilience uh, words. Um, so tell us what you do and how these words can be applied to your life or your business. Um, I'm going to actually start with a word and then go into what I do. Sure. So unstoppable resilience is very much, I think, what my whole journey has been through mm -hmm. um, because I am now a spiritual lifestyle coach. So I work with people helping to take the fear and stress out of them and help them to believe that they can have the life that they deserve and not have the fear that it's never going to happen. So I work extensively with them. And as you said, I'm also an energy healer and tarot reader. I'm a certified coach, so I have the logic, but then I also have the intuitive part of me that I use together. And my journey, <clears throat> excuse me, my journey as an Asian woman, I've had to fight for my independence because I was second generation when I came to this country. So things were very different and the role of a woman or what was expected well still is expected in some ways with some families and you know cultures is very much that you will be the housewife you will do whatever your husband says is okay not okay that kind of thing is still there on yeah. some pages my family have moved away from it but when I was growing up that's how much that culture was still very strong although you lived in a country that is um a bit more open on these yes. kind of things but that was i think the problem because my parents were first generation when they came to the a new country so holding on to their beliefs and cultures yeah. and ways of being became a lot more stronger sure. whereas my cousins back in india were developing faster than we were of course, because, because they yeah. had the comparison with other people in that country while exactly. here it seemed the difference yeah too big. It, exactly yeah. so they were kind of growing and becoming more open and western and you know because india yeah. was changing mm -hmm. whereas the indians in this country were tightening <laughs> yeah she, they, they kept of course uh, uh, even closer to their tradition yeah. habits and exactly. cultural beliefs so that's exactly. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then they wanted of course us you know children to carry yeah. that forward so being the youngest of all of my brothers and sisters um i think with me that conflict was a lot more apparent because i was the youngest so yeah. Yeah, the really... first, the first always pay for uh, to open the the streets of freedom to the rest. Yeah, well, the thing is that the elder two were um, already teenagers. I was uh, still a very young person. Oh, there was the gap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was six. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay. my education, you know, so the memory of India and all of the customs and stuff is very. Um, what do you call it? It, it? It's there, but not really there. So mm -hmm. I remember some bits, but it's not as strong as my siblings had it. So therefore, I think with me, being in England was my life. You know, what, what yeah. I knew, I, I understood my exactly. culture, but yeah. I embraced this more. And mm -hmm. I think that's where the conflict came. So the resilience part has been very much overcoming as I've been growing up, those, you know, barriers, cultural changing things and changing thinking. So, yeah. It was mainly a conflict with your uh, close family anyway. Well, yes, I would say not so much the family itself. I would probably say the beliefs. Yeah, yeah. of the community. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yes. the family because, of the, you know, they were part of that community. But of so, course, you felt English. I mean... You felt integrated in the English culture. culture. I felt integrated in both cultures. Mm -hmm. I, re I respect. I don't view, and I think I've always had that, 
all of my friends from a very young age have always been international. They've mm -hmm. not been of one color or one creed or, you know, I'm only staying with the Indians or the English or yeah. whatever, but multiracial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always have done. So because I've always had that, I've never not said to myself, I don't fit into that culture. Yeah. I can't work with that culture because for me, it's about who I am. Mm -hmm. And if I can have that relationship with a person, laugh, you know, get to know them and stuff, yeah. that's the level I'm creating that um, of connection. It doesn't, it doesn't change anything from exactly. where you come in life or exactly. physically from which country. So I respect all cultures, all traditions. Um, there's an English saying, when in Rome, do what the Romans do. Mm -hmm. So I respect that if I'm in somebody's country, then I'm going to be, you know, respecting their traditions and cultures and sure. stuff and not enforcing mine. And when I was, you know, at home with my parents, I was, you know, when uh, we had a very active upbringing in the sense of very social mm -hmm. so I would be wearing the Indian clothes going to the Indian parties weddings whatever but then I would integrate and go to school and you know out with my friends and dinners and everything so for me I adapted in both cultures mm -hmm. you know um, so although uh, apparent uh, I mean the conflict maybe was there but uh, yeah. it was uh, a bless in the end Yes. But I think in countries like uh, England, where you have cultures from all over, over the, the world, mm. it's so amazing that uh, we become just people and not yeah. uh, I'm from or what do you do in life? I mean, it's more, yeah. you are more open. I yeah. can see it with my children, of course. I mean, their class, probably they are the only one who have one of the parents English. The yeah. rest are from all over the world, and this yeah. is so um, inspiring as well, and yeah. motivating, and yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's it's also remembering that the culture and life that my parents' generation came from, travel wasn't such a big thing. Mm -hmm. You know, going on an aeroplane or something was very expensive, so you stuck sure. to local. You mm -hmm. know, you stuck to the, the areas you knew, the country you knew. You went yeah. on holiday. You went in your own country. Mm -hmm. You didn't think I'm going to get on a plane and, you know, go. I grew up and I even had a job where I was traveling the world. Mm -hmm. That was unheard of, you know, getting on a plane. And that was my train, you know, commute yeah. on a weekly basis and then back on a Friday and stuff. Oh, so wow. life has changed so much. And we have the world has become very small. Yeah. So, you know. Yes, you're in London, but I've spoken to people in Australia, other parts sure. of the world, yeah. and we're so interconnected now. Yeah, we have the advantage of the technology exactly. and um, exactly. a and more extensive knowledge and information, free exactly. information, because, I mean, we are the same generation. And of course, yeah. I left Italy because I felt like I was in a cage. But if I see now the, the girls, the life they have, it's not that anymore they don't have this urge to leave yeah. the country that is yeah. um like a prison but for yeah. me it was yes uh, so things changed and changed very fast yes. for yes. women uh, as well yeah although of course uh, there are um, some limitations still there we cannot mm. deny that but of course uh, i mean we cannot compare ourselves not even with our parents yeah uh, let alone with our grandparents Exactly. And uh, exactly. And I think um, part of my journey has been all of this learning um, because because of what I went through culturally and mm -hmm. what I was um, not allowed to do as in, you know, being restrained that you have to now get married, you have to now settle down, you have to now conform, you know, be the good wife, that kind yeah. of label. Because I rebelled from that, not that I didn't want it, I wanted it my way, not yeah. The way my as a choice and not uh, as yeah. a yeah a rule exactly mm -hmm. and that helped me in my journey then to becoming a coach mm -hmm. um because yeah i think subconsciously I've, I've always wanted to help people i've always wanted to understand people more and things like that so being able to break free of my culture allowed me that time and space to really begin to understand things and see my parents as human beings and not my father and mother 
because then you start to kind of go, okay, you can see their pain, you can see exactly what they've gone through, why they've made the decisions. That, so I wasn't in a war state with them. I wasn't kind of like, oh, my parents did this to me and they did that and whatever. I was like, oh, okay. And then what did I do? So you're able to look at it from an adult point of view. Yeah, a different and point of view, of course. Exactly. And I healed all of my relationships. So now with my parents, it's, well, the whole family, it's, you know, been amazing. Yeah, that's excellent. I mean, this is the aim because when then our relationships are in a good place, we feel uh, at peace. Yes to then face anything because life has its own challenges already. We don't need extra ones. Exactly. And your family and, you know, that foundation you have, having a support network, that is really the root of mm -hmm. you. And when you have that, because, you know, I'm an energy healer and, you know, all of that kind of thing. So I have that connection to believing that when you have your foundation and your root, then it makes it easier for you to be able to then go to the next level of your life because you're yeah. not in conflict you're not feeling you don't belong anywhere and mm -hmm. constantly looking for that jigsaw to fit into place it's, so, it's very yeah. interesting the combination of the two because uh, as I told you I worked a lot on mindset so the coaching part but uh, the healing part is so as you said interconnected you need the logic but also the spiritual part because once you you get to the awareness of the problem then you have to heal it yeah. because otherwise it stays there and exactly. uh, it's an extra problem otherwise exactly yeah. and it's also because as i said i do have the logical part mm -hmm. um, i came from a corporate background and i have mm. you know certified coaching so from that point of view it's letting people know that it doesn't have to be spiritual mm -hmm. because that not everybody you know is okay with the word spiritual you yeah. know and and i don't need to preach it to people but it's explaining to them that actually you can heal yourself by your mindset yeah because it's the same thing it's more about working through the pain mm -hmm. how you want to work through it whether you want to do it from a spiritual point of view look you know inwardly what's going on what's my feeling all of that or whether you want to do it from a logical point of view of why do I keep feeling that way why am I repeating this pattern why yeah. do I keep on attracting the same person who keeps on hurting yeah. me Mm -hmm. you know or taking advantage of me and why do I keep losing money there's so many elements that could be happening yeah. as long as you take an angle that you're happy with and work through the pain and know that there will be pain mm -hmm. you know for somebody to expect that they can heal by putting everything into a box and going nope that's fine I've no, dealt with it actually it's, it's exactly the opposite you have yeah. to open that box the yes. Pandora box exactly Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly and then you can store it and then mm -hmm. it's stored yeah. in a healthy way yeah but when you're just kind of going no I've dealt with it by ignoring it yeah exactly. you might have dealt with it now so you're yeah temporarily but then it will come up again it, definitely it's your life it will, yeah it comes up worse yeah 10 times worse yeah. so that, that's why I encourage people to start facing it when the, the pain first happens because even though it feels really bad yeah it's that's actually it's first well, stages it's a bit yes uh, maybe quicker, quicker or yes. closer to deal with so exactly. definitely yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah the journey will be quicker mm -hmm. and you mentioned that you were part of the corporate world yes how <laughs> did you decide then to change um yeah your profession <laughs> doing your, this yeah. business and I know it's a, well as, as I said I'm an Asian woman so I grew up with a typical Asian background you know you went and you got your degree you went to you know university so I followed what was not expected expect, of no. me but uh. what I knew normal time, yeah yeah, normal. yeah. someone else child, uh, had done before you yeah. exactly because when you're a child you're not thinking so deeply you're just going, oh yeah, okay, you do university, you go to work. Yeah. But when I finish university, I, I actually have a technical background. So forget about the logic and spiritual. I'm very technical. Mm -hmm. I, I have a um, degree in computing. Oh, okay. So when I left university, I went into um, working, mm -hmm. you know, the corporate world for jobs and stuff. And my first job 
I worked for a um, telecoms company, worked into middle management. I was in my mid twenties. And then I went on to um, the next level corporate job, which was management consulting. And then I was traveling the world. Mm -hmm. And, but from the age of 19, I always knew I wanted my own business. I just didn't know when or what. Or what, yeah. But I always have, since I was ever so high, um, loved wanting to, not wanting to, but trying to understand people, Mm -hmm. body language, um, how people think, you know, what they do and all of that kind of thing. I've always been intrigued about human nature and everything. So when I was approaching uh, my 30s, I decided um, that this was probably a good time to, because a corporate job was getting too much. I I was, you know, priorities were changing in life and things like that. So I thought, okay, this is the time to do it now. And Mm -hmm. that's when I decided, and I had just um, started learning my coaching, started, was training in my- um, By then uh, you knew what? Yes. Well, the funny thing is, I I started coaching 2001 Mm -hmm. was when I started learning. Yeah. Prior to that, I was looking at what can I do? Because in this country, coaching didn't exist. Yeah, exactly. It's a quite uh, recent acquisition. It was more um, a North American. uh, Yeah, um, exactly. Very much. Mm -hmm. And just as I was leaving the corporate world, I started hearing that coaches mm-hmm. were coming into the corporate world and going oh, okay. up on team building. And I thought, mm-hmm. God, I've spent 10 years in the corporate world. I don't want to be there. Yeah. So I thought, no, I'm not going to be that kind of coach. I want to do personal coaching. Mm-hmm. And I struggled because oh. to get clear. Because it was too new. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Once I qualified, I struggled because people viewed me and thought, she's going to put me into a mental home. She's going to think I need, you know, counseling or something mm-hmm. wrong with my life. And So I actually, for 10 years after that, I had... There was a bit of resistance from from the the people. So I went into interior design. I -hmm. had an interior design business, Mm -hmm. which was doing really well. But then I realized I was wasting my time because I could do it, but I didn't want to do it. Okay. I thought, you know, coaching is what you want to do. Why are you wasting time? Yeah. Um, you feel a sort of a call. I mean, you cannot ignore it. No. You can for a while. So well, you deviate and you start another business exactly. and then maybe another and then another, but it's still there. Yes. And that's exactly what it was because I went on to event management. And but when I did come back to coaching, it was probably a better time mm-hmm. because one, it was known then. Yeah. I came back into coaching, I think, 2014. Mm hmm. Um, you know yeah quite a a few years well almost 15 years uh, later exactly and um and everything had become online so Mm -hmm. zoom wasn't around but skype was so you were able to all of a sudden get start getting international clients Mm -hmm. whereas before it was all local and of course yeah in an area uh, that didn't know what coaching was on facebook was happening and twitter and you know all of these advances in technology which started making it so much easier of course so um so that's how i went okay now's the right time to commit and that's when i started focusing we, so you left your interior design um, yeah. yes. business completely. Yeah, I left that completely um, and went, okay, I'm not going to waste any more time. But while I was doing interior designing, I was also um, opening up to my spirituality mm-hmm. because I wasn't born a tarot reader or, you know, energy healer. Yeah, but course. I started um, attending groups only because I was new to the area. I wanted to meet people mm-hmm. and then I'd started you know doing this on the side to keep myself busy yeah and then I started realizing I can make money (laughs) this is a quick way of making money while the coaching side is coming along yeah so I started getting a lot of tarot clients Mm -hmm. and I started getting a lot of referrals and you know so that that um, started to grow and Everybody, even now, I think still is born with that subconscious mindset that you can only have one career, one, you know, thing in life, 
you can't do anything else. It's one job and that's that's it. And I didn't realize I had that subconscious mindset. Mm -hmm. So I had... Yeah, it's very limiting if you think. I mean, it prevents us to do the things that we uh, love. Exactly. Um, But but you just don't question it because it's normal. Yeah. You know, and all of a sudden I... So I had a very successful interior design business, which I left because I thought, oh, no, I have to do coaching. I can't be doing yeah, that. Yeah, there's no, nothing in common, you thought. Exactly. Yeah. It's and what we then, tend to do. Yeah. And then my tarot business was, as I said, you know, I was making really good money. And I went, no, I can't do that. I have to do coaching. <laughs> and what will my coaching clients think if they find out I'm a tarot reader? Yeah. So... I had that conflict going on. So I left mm-hmm. my tarot business first time around. Oh, wow. And I went, no, coaching is it. And then I did concentrate just on coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, and then last few years back, I think uh, 2018 mm-hmm. was when I started going, no, I need to start getting back into tarot's. And that's when, um, not energy healing came a year later, even though I was Reiki qualified. Yeah. Same time as I qualified for my coaching, I never used Reiki. So I just went, no, I'm I'm not an energy healer. No, it's fine. And, you know, I just kind of put it. Yeah, we want to deny it uh, to ourselves for whatever reason, because maybe we see that they don't really match together while they do. Yes. Because you are uh, considering the person in uh, its full yeah. and not just from one point of view. Yeah. And exactly. if you think of the design, the interior design uh, business as well, you are mm-hmm. looking after the feelings of people. Mm-hmm. So in reality, it's all the same thing. Exactly. It is. Uh, everything we do in life, every service we give is coaching. Yeah. You know, the product and how we come in through the doorway may be different. But it's all about coaching because it's all about making people feel better, better. making people yeah. feel safe and yeah. happy with, you know, whether it's the clothes and styling and, you know, or whether it's to do with their home. Totally. It, yeah, it's all about that. And it's all about confidence at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So, um, yes. So it's actually in 2019, then I started doing the energy healing as well. And they started kind of taking off, but I was still in conflict with how do I make this work with my coaching? Mm -hmm. And the other thing I did was I came out, I told the rest of the world because I had kept the spiritual side of me very- As a secret. Yeah, to my coaching. I even had a different name Mm -hmm. as a tarot reader. I didn't go with Ambila Nath. I had a different name because I thought people will judge me um, if they found me. But 2018, I think it was, I went, okay, and I posted on Facebook, because in Facebook, it's not so much my friends around me didn't know, it's my family didn't know, and all the people I had grown up with. So all the society Mm -hmm. that I had had all of that conflict with and everything else, they didn't know. So I posted on Facebook and I said, this is my business. This is what I do. This is what I've been doing for years. This is me. And everybody went, oh, wow. God, wow. (laughs) Like, that's not what I was. (laughs) What are you saying? You should get angry or upset or whatever. (laughs) And they all went, my God, you can do that. (laughs) And, And it was just like, whoa, okay. And I think for me, that was the biggest thing, because for me, it just opened the doorway to me fully accepting who I am. Plenty of confidence, of course. Yes. yes. Exactly. But it it also gave me permission Mm -hmm. to then go, I can use these in my coaching. And then um, I I recently actually just worked with somebody and she showed me a way that I could make all of it work seamlessly. Mm-hmm. And, and since then, it's just been amazing with regards to, you know, the last 18 months, so the lockdown for me has been I've the best worked, uh, for my business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's amazing. And I, I, I bet you felt super light afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, like a, a huge weight off your shoulder. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. And And because I think the biggest thing is there's nothing hidden from anybody. 
So when, you know, I'm seeing whether I'm seeing my family or whether I'm meeting somebody new, I'm the same person. Yeah, I, I can imagine the struggle and the tension and the stress yeah. of uh, almost having to have two personalities. Yes. Because, uh, one couldn't go with the other in your, yeah. in your mind. Yes. Yeah, so it's a, a huge revelation for you, but you have a gift that you have to share with others. So we are all very happy that you, you. <laughs> got to this uh, <laughs> uh, freedom to yeah. express uh, yourself. Thank you. Um, now, tell me. No, no, I was just going to say, I think it's really important for you know people to know that, that there will always be some people who won't be comfortable with who you are and what you do and what you like and what you don't like. But remember, there will be a huge amount who will be. And those are the people you need to concentrate on and not the little pot that isn't. Exactly. Exactly. So, we cannot please everyone. But as, uh, independently from our business as a person, yeah. we cannot be happy, make happy everyone. So yeah. why we, should we in business? And, exactly. and we have to accept it. And it's, yes. uh, uh, it depends on our uh, uniqueness, actually. And we have to defend that and be proud of it. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. I remember actually um, recently, my daughter is uh, almost 12 and she was, of course, they change ideas about jobs all the time. But she's been quite concentrated on the fact she wants to be a, a writer. Mm -hmm. And then one day she said, yeah, but maybe I would like to teach. I said, yeah, and you can be a writer as well. Yeah. But how can I do it? Okay, she chose even two things very easy to, to, yeah. to combine together. But as you said, yeah. it seems that they, we are born exactly with this uh, limitation. Yeah. And exactly. fortunately, nowadays, we know, we know in, in, at a yeah. logical um, level that it's not like that. Yeah. So, and I think a good way of really getting people to understand that is that Everybody wants to make money. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be comfortable, whether that's yes. earning 50,000 a year to 50 million a year, whatever. Everybody wants to be comfortable in their lives. Yes. So one thing I learned, and this was, I think, back in 2015, I thought, OK, how do the rich do it? Mm -hmm. And then you start looking at the rich and you're going, they're not keeping to one thing. Exactly. They're doing, you know, I mean, take David Beckham. Everybody knows David Beckham. Yes, he's a footballer, but yes. then he also does advertising endorsements. He also does, you know, so many other businesses. And, and when you start going, they have lots of multiple incomes. Why am I stopping myself by going, I can only do one thing? Yeah. And I think for me, when I had that realization, that's what started opening up all the doors to the point that I even say to my clients, if they say, no, I'll just do this. And I'm, and I'm oh. tapping them over the hand going, no, no, you, have to do other thing. <laughs> you will do everything. You can make it work. Yeah. <laughs> if you enjoy it and you can make money, you do it. Yeah. Because why should you close the doorways? If the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, is opening the doors for you and saying, we want to give you money yeah exactly why, why do you have to say no I, yeah i closed it on two businesses yeah. it seems counter uh, counterintuitive but yeah. it happens unfortunately exactly. i know and but you learn the lesson very quickly yes. you're like yes. oh my god <laughs> so yeah so i always ask my guests if there's a word specifically or a quote that can be like a bit uh, a guidance or uh, the base for your life and business yeah if you my one. two words stroke I suppose if you want to use them as quotes is be you mm -hmm. be yourself embrace yourself love yourself and trust yourself mm -hmm. accept yourself and acknowledge yourself because when you do all of that others around you will start to do that but when you're not the one doing it yeah then others won't do it either. So whatever is going on inside of you is being reflected into your life. So just be yourself, be happy with whatever you're doing, whoever you are, mm -hmm. and the world around you will start to change. 
I totally agree. I really, I really like this one. Thank, Thank you. you very much. So I just want to remind everyone that um, 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 uh, Amila contacts will be in the post in uh, my bio and on uh, YouTube and my web page. So we, uh, you can uh, reach out um, in many ways. And I thank you for being with us and for this uh, really inspiring conversation. Um, I say goodbye and see you uh, next week.